What is it you are saying, Fitzwilliam? What is it you are talking of? What is it you are telling, Miss Bennet? Let me hear what it is. We're speaking of music, madam. Music? Oh, then pray speak aloud. It is of all subjects, my delight. I must have my share in the conversation if you are speaking of music. There are few people in England, I suppose, who have a more true enjoyment of music than myself, or a better natural taste. If I had ever learned, I should have been a great proficient. And so would Anne, if her health had allowed her to so apply. How does your sister Georgiana get on, Darcy? She is wonderfully proficient, madam. Uh, pray tell her from me that she cannot expect to excel if she does not practice a great deal. I have told Miss Bennet several times that she will never play really well unless she practices more and on a good instrument. She may come to Rosings and practice on the piano forte in the housekeeper's room. She will be in nobody's way in that part of the house. Will you play for us now, Miss Bennet, and sing? Please do, Miss Bennet. Well, we're waiting, Miss Bennet. father's estate is entailed on Mr. Collins, I believe. I am glad of it for you, Mrs. Collins, but otherwise see no occasion for entailing estates away from the female line. Mrs. Bennet had five daughters, and as if that were not bad enough, has altogether left them to run wild with no governess. Miss Bennet expresses herself very decidedly for one so young. She cannot be more than one and twenty. Her sisters are all out, all five of them. The younger out before the elder are married. They will have too much time to get into trouble. It is not wise. Mark my words. The mother sounds to me a very foolish person. You mean to frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming in all this state to hear me. But I will not be alarmed, though your sister does play so well. And Mr. Berg would, if only she could. There is a stubbornness about me that can never bear to be frightened at the will of others. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. I shall not say that you are mistaken, because you could not really believe me to entertain any design of alarming you. And I've had the pleasure of your acquaintance long enough to know that you find great enjoyment in occasionally professing opinions which are in fact not your own. Oh, your cousin will give you a very pretty notion of me and teach you not to believe a word I say. I am unlucky in meeting with a man so well able to expose my character in part of the world where I had hoped to pass myself off with some degree of credit. You are impolitic, Mr. Darcy, in provoking me to retaliate. I am not afraid of you. Pray let me hear more about my cousin, Miss Bennet. I should like to know how he behaves amongst strangers. <gasps> well, prepare yourself for something dreadful. I first met Mr. Darcy at a ball, where he danced only four dances, though gentlemen were scarce. And to my knowledge, more than one lady was sitting down in want of a partner. I knew only my own party. Oh, and nobody can ever be expected to be introduced in a ballroom. What shall I play next, Colonel? My fingers await your orders. Uh, perhaps I should have sought introductions, but I'm ill-qualified to recommend myself to strangers. A man of sense and education who's lived in the world, ill-qualified. How can that be, Colonel? Well, he will not give himself the trouble, I suppose. I cannot converse easily with those I have not seen before. I cannot catch the love of conversation or appear interested in their concerns, as others seem to do. Well, my fingers are not so masterly on this instrument as many others. But then I've always supposed it to be my fault, because I would not give myself the trouble. What is it you are saying, Miss Bennet? What is it you are talking of, Darcy? Anne, come here and have your share of the conversation. Miss Bennet may have a very fine notion of fingering, but her taste is not equal to Anne's. How could it be? Her sister's all out, and not even the eldest married. 